Welcome to the Polcam training video. Please keep in mind that each system is configured specifically to the needs of individual customers, but the principles covered in this video should be helpful to all users of the Polcam. The Polcam system, an overview. The Polcam comes in two standard Cordura bags, but many customers find it useful to get these hard transit cases with pull-out handles and rolling wheels. The standard bags fit snugly inside the travel cases, making it easy to pull the bags out and be ready to rig the system. Conversely, once the shoot is done, the standard bags fit quickly inside the travel cases without the need for further packing. The system is made up of two bags. The long bag on the left is normally called the mast bag, and the square bag on the right is normally referred to as the unit bag. Both bags are designed with usability in mind. Both have lots of extra pockets and spaces for accessories and tools, as well as having specifically designed spaces for the various parts of the pole cam system. The unit bag has pockets on all sides, as well as a netting inside the lid. This is useful for paperwork and instruction manuals. The unit bag is made up of a removable unit tray and a lower section made up of high density foam to protect the more delicate parts of the system, like the camera head and CCU. Please note the position of the pull cam head, the interface unit, the CCU, the joystick, and the monitor. There are several other pockets that can be filled with accessories or spare parts. Should the bag get dirty or wet, the phone section can be removed and the bag sides can be accessed with zippers for cleaning or replacing. Moving on to the mast bag. There are four attachment points for a harness and two attachment points for a shoulder strap that is normally stowed in the long pocket at the front of the bag. The bag opens all the way to reveal six slots or pockets for the carbon fiber sections. Five sections come in a standard pole cam. One pocket is for an extra section or a half section. All carbon fiber sections are identical. Dust covers and the harness normally sit loose in the center of the bag. The other side of the mass bag contains what is normally referred to as section one, as well as two accessory pockets useful for batteries and a place for the aluminum elbow. In the center of the bag are two long pockets for the rigging stands that are included with each system. Rigging the system from scratch. The first thing that needs to be done is to put the tripod mounting plate onto the balance plate on section one. There are a number of industry standard quarter inch and three eighth inch screw mounts to facilitate mounting. Once the tripod plate is securely attached, you can now place section one onto the tripod. Then you can rest the lower part of section one onto one of the tripod legs. At this point, please set the tension in the tripod head to minimum. Please make sure that the dolly brakes are on. That keeps the tripod from rolling. When building the pole cam from scratch, it is highly recommended that you build the system to the full five sections, then adjust it to the number of sections you'll need to use. This sets the various cables into position from which it is easy then to shorten and lengthen the rig at will. The carbon fiber sections are identical. One end is narrower with a nylon locking pin, which is easily removable for replacement and cleaning. The easiest way to join the sections is to push the nylon pin down, then carefully slide the narrow section into the wider end, and then turn until the nylon pin clicks into position. Sometimes it might be necessary to wipe the narrower end gently with your hand to remove dust or dirt to facilitate insertion. Please try to keep the sections parallel as you join them. After two or three sections, you will find that it might be time to employ one of the two rigging stands to keep the actual end off the ground. Set the rigging stand at a comfortable height for you. Two rigging stands are provided with each rig in case you need to build a rig without a tripod or in case you should need to remove the tripod at any time. Be careful of your fingers as you join the carbon fiber sections, especially the webbing between thumb and index finger. Also note that after you join the sections initially, you will find that they will rotate slightly if you twist them. This is normal and this will disappear once the head and other parts of the system are in place. Once the five sections are joined, you're ready to run the cables to the end of the pole cam. There are three cables that normally run up the full length of the pole, the camera cable, the pant tilt cable, and the microphone. The microphone is optional, but we'll be including it here for purposes of demonstration. To facilitate feeding the cables, we'll be using a very simple webbed cable feeder. The cables are all identical at each end, so it doesn't matter which way you feed them, except for the microphone. The cables come reverse coiled, making it easy to feed them all at the same time. Put the cables on the ground beside each other at the back of the rig. If you are rigging in a dirty or wet environment, please use some kind of mat or you can feed the cables directly out of the mast bag. The camera cable goes in first, then the pan tilt cable, and finally the microphone goes in last to help hold the other two cables in place. Now you can start to feed the cables down the tube. Often, especially in warmer climates, the cables are soft and pliable enough that you can use gravity to help you feed the cables through. Make sure no knots or kinks or twists get into the back of the cables as you feed them down the tube. 
If the cables get stuck, it's easy to unlock one or two of the carbon fiber sections to help pull the cables through to the end. Once the cables are out, gently remove the cable feeder and now it's time to take up the excess cable at the back. Reverse coiling keeps the cables kink free and makes it easier to pull through the end of the pole when changing the size of the rig. Normally the cables are kept separated with cable ties and hang together off the hook at the side of section 1, ready to be adjusted if necessary. There is no special order for the way the cables hang on the hook. The important thing is that you use a red or other cable wrap to identify the three cables going up to the head of the rig to separate them from the other cables that we'll be feeding next. It is at this point that if you know you will not be using the full five sections, you can remove any unwanted carbon fiber sections and readjust the cabling. Simply detach the unneeded carbon fiber sections, hang the cable in a way to keep it off the floor, and put the unneeded sections away. Now you can pull the three cables back through the tube as one until they are at the proper length for what you're using. Then reverse coil them again together as a unit, secure with a cable tie, and this will make extending the rig back to five sections extremely fast when you need to do it. Once you've secured these cables, you're ready to continue rigging the system. Now you're ready to feed the monitor cables. There are two monitor cables, the power cable and the video cable. Power cable needs to be fed from the hole at the top of section one to the back because of the size of the four pin XLR connector. You can remove the grommet, place it over the cable, then feed the cable through the hole in section one, pushing it backwards. Once the end appears at the back, it might be easier to pull the cable through rather than to continue to push. Now you're ready to feed the video cable. The same principle applies as for the power cable. A good rule of thumb for cable length of these two cables is that they should reach to the first joint of the carbon fiber sections. But as you become more familiar with the system, you'll find that the lengths of these cables that is comfortable for where you choose to place the monitor and joystick. Next, find the monitor clamp, open it up, feed the power and video cables under the slots allotted for them in the clamp, then tighten the clamp around the pole. Make sure to tuck the nut handle underneath the pole once you've tightened the screw. Now retrieve the monitor and attach it to the universal joint, making sure the monitor is quite secure. Finally, you can attach the monitor's video cable and the monitor's power cable. Now you're ready to feed the joystick cable. This is done the same way as the monitor cables. Loosen the grommet and feed the cable through. At this point, it is fine to let these cables hang at the back of the rig. Now you're ready to connect the joystick. Make sure you connect the joystick to the cable first before attempting to feed the elastic ribbon, just in case the joystick slips. At this point, don't worry about getting the position of the monitor and joysticks perfect, as they can be adjusted later to suit your individual needs. Now you're ready to adjust the cables at the back end. Reverse coiling them and keeping their prospective cable ties with them makes for easy access. Now retrieve the beige interface unit which controls the power and provides joystick control to the head. The unit is mounted with two strips of velcro. Make sure that the on off switch faces the front of the rig. Press the unit firmly into the velcro of section one. The interface unit has over voltage protection. Should the power light not come on when you first turn the power on, open the interface unit with a flathead screwdriver and check the fuses. There are two spare fuses just in case one of the fuses is blown. Now you're ready to mount the CCU of the camera. In this case, it's a Toshiba camera. It mounts on the side with the cables. Gently pull the cables aside and firmly press the CCU onto the strips of Velcro on the side of section one. Now you can start to connect the cables to the interface unit. Normally we start at the bottom and work our way up. The microphone first, then the pan tilt cable, then the joystick cable, and finally the monitor power cable. The Toshiba power cable goes into the 12 volt output and connects around the side to the four pin Hirose connection at the back of the Toshiba camera. Gently twist the cable until you feel it pop into position. 